is on page 355, the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water, little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three, mem mem three members of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to his servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Amen. We'll read Psalm 15 together in unison. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart, there is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things, shall never be overthrown.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning others and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Surprise. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Well, uh, that was a surprise, but my being here is a bit of a surprise too. I had not expected to be back with you again quite so soon. Jason, in case you have not heard, came back from his trip to Disneyland with COVID. Been seven days since he tested positive, and so technically he could 
have been here this morning, but he thought that you might not appreciate it, no matter how much you might have missed him. And so I told him, you know, sure, I, um, I'll be glad to take the service since, you know, looking at my calendar, the week looked pretty clear, not much going on, but as happens so often, this week turned out quite crazy and stressful. When life throws us chaos or even a little bit of mess, we may cope by losing ourselves hiding in busyness and work and putting off time for ourselves and God. Or we may sit with God and put off getting up and doing all the things that need to be done. These are two extreme opposite responses, ways of being that we identify with Mary and Martha the two sisters in our gospel this morning. When we hear the story of Mary and Martha, we tend to immediately connect with one or the other. You hear people say, well, I'm a Mary, or I'm a Martha. And please note, this is not about gender. Martha's too. So depending on who you most identify with, this story can either make you squirm in your seat or sit up a little straighter, feeling a bit proud of yourself. It has been used in such a way as to put down the hard-working Marthas, the doers, and holding up the Marys, the contemplatives, which makes those of us with Martha tendencies feel a bit guilty and inadequate. At heart, I'm a Mary, but I was raised by Marthas. My mother, my grandmother, my aunts. I was raised by done then to recognize my tasks and responsibilities and to set about to accomplish them. And only then, when all was completed, could I allow myself to take time out for me, for reflection, for prayer, time to just be? It was what was ex expected of me and what I expected of myself. It was how I was raised. And it is so ingrained in me that I still, even though I know better, I struggle with it. But before you put yourself firmly in either Martha or Mary's shoes, I want to offer a little bit different perspective. Perhaps this is not a story about which sister is the better model for us to follow. Mary or Martha, being or doing, work or prayer, as if there's a competition between the two. What if instead it's about the connection between the two, the symbiotic relationship of the two? I started thinking about this after reading a quote from Bernard of Clairvaux who said, Action and contemplation are very close companions. They live together in one house on equal terms. Mary and Martha are sisters. To put this story into context, Jesus isn't visiting Mary and Martha for a leisurely, joyful encounter with friends. At this point in Luke's gospel, things were not going well for Jesus. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He knows that things are coming to a head with the authorities. He knows that his death is near. And all those close to him, while not knowing exactly what will happen, know that it is dangerous for him to be there 
and have tried to talk him out of going. And so as they near Jerusalem, they stop at the home of friends who offer them hospitality. And so you can just imagine the tension that must be in that room, the unspoken fear underlying this gathering. And Martha is frantic in her desire to offer the best hospitality to Jesus that she can. Her actions are understandable, necessary even. But Jesus seems to rebuke her for what she is doing, for her practical get-down-to-business attitude. And so we have to ask ourselves, can Martha and therefore those like her be wrong to want to do what needs to be done? I don't think that's what he's saying. Because just last week, we heard Jesus pointing to the Good Samaritan as a model for those who would follow, who would walk in God's way, saying, go and do likewise. Martha recognized Jesus' needs, his need for hospitality, for a warm and safe place to stay, food to eat, and open hearts to share companionship with. And so she sets out single-mindedly to offer this gift to him. Mary, on the other hand, acknowledges the tension. She realizes that this may be the last chance she has to spend with Jesus. And so she chooses to sit quietly at Jesus' feet. She is present and listening, breaking with convention by setting aside the usual demands that a woman would have been expected to fulfill, leaving it all to Martha. And Jesus says Mary has chosen rightly. So if we do take this at surface level, then we can see Mary and Martha as in opposition to each other. To work at all costs or to set aside responsibilities to be with Jesus. But you see, this story follows immediately after last week's parable of the Good Samaritan and when seen as a pair, when these stories see, are seen together, a different picture emerges. When seen as close companions, the two stories illustrate for us the two things that are necessary for us to inherit eternal life. Remember from last week? What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The Good Samaritan and Martha show us a bit of what love of neighbor looks like. And the the love of God and love of self is shown through the choice that Mary makes. It's not a matter of love God or love your neighbor. Both actions, both action and contemplation are necessary to make up the whole. And I think what really throws us off is that we have a tendency to see Jesus' words to Martha as a rebuke, as a criticism, rather than as an observation and an invitation to approach life differently. What she is doing isn't wrong in and of itself. It is quite necessary. But she avoids facing the particular circumstances of Jesus' visit by immersing herself in work. And so she becomes overwhelmed with all that has to be done 
especially since Mary is not doing anything to help. Frantic and frustrated, she confronts Jesus. Can't you see what she's doing, what she's not doing? She's left me here with all the work while she sits and enjoys herself. This reminds me of my sister and I when we were growing up. Guess which one was the Martha and which one was the Mary? <laughs> if you know my sister, you probably know. Um, he, she, she confronts Jesus with this, wanting him to support her. But in response to her outburst, Jesus didn't call her out for the gift of hospitality that she was offering. It wasn't her cooking, her cleaning, or her serving that bothered him. Notice the actual problem that he named. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. The root meaning of the word worry is strangle or seize by the throat and tear. The root meaning of the word distraction is a separation or dragging apart of something that should be whole. These are violent words, words that wound and fracture. This state of mind when we are worried and distracted that's my, it renders us incoherent, divided, unwhole. And this is how Jesus found Martha. She was in a condition in which she could not savor his presence with her. She couldn't find the sacred in the work that she was doing. She wasn't able to let herself receive what Jesus wanted to offer her or to show him genuine love. Instead, all she could do was question his love and focus on herself. Does any of that sound familiar to you? Do you ever let yourself get so fragmented so strangled, so incoher incoherent that you struggle to give and receive love? Are you ever quick to get upset? Has your busyness made the people that you want to host uncomfortable, making them feel like a burden rather than a guest? Is your worrying keeping you from being fully present fully engaged, fully alive? Have you lost the ability to attend, to linger, to delve deep, to just be? Are you using your packed schedule to avoid intimacy with God or with others? What do you do when faced with the many demands and responsibilities Put upon you, or when you're slapped in the face with whatever hard situation that life throws at you? My answer to pretty much all of these questions is yes. It sounds very familiar. I struggle to maintain balance in my life, tending to put action before contemplation, the doing before the being, the neighbor before God, as if one is more important than the other. And so I get like Martha. I worry and I'm distracted by many things. Mary and Martha, contemplation and action, love of God and love of neighbor, the one is absolutely necessary to the other in order to keep our spirit and our lives in balance. We are to love our neighbor as ourself, and when we love our neighbor, we take care of them. If we love them as ourselves, then that means that we have to take care of ourselves. 
And the first thing to do when taking care of ourselves before action of any kind is to love God, which in addition to worship and prayer means to allow ourselves the time to just be in God's presence, to be present and listen like Mary in order to feed our souls so that we can go out to love and serve our neighbor. In her book, Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World, Joanna Weaver wrote, when we put work before worship, we put the cart before the horse. The cart is important, so is the horse. But the horse must come first, or we end up pulling the cart ourselves. Frustrated and weary, we can nearly break under the pressure of service, for there is always something that needs to be done. When we first spend time in his, in Jesus' presence, when we take time to hear his voice, God provides the horsepower that we need to pull the heaviest load. He saddles up grace and invites us to take a ride. And this is the good news. Through God's grace and love of us, God gives us the ability to do what we need to do and to do it as a sacred offering. The ability to find this balance of contemplation and action in service and prayer, love of God and love of neighbor is part of God's grace. Remember, not even Jesus stayed on the mountaintop in prayer and contemplation. Even he, after spending time with God, he also acted. He came down from the mountain, feeding, healing, teaching, reaching out to those God placed before him. So with all that we have to do, in the midst of the busyness and chaos of our days, I pray that we, like Mary, will take the time to sit in the presence of Jesus to offer God an open heart, a receptive mind, a devoted spirit, and then, with our hearts and minds centered on God, then go out into the world attentive and watchful of the needs of others as we do the work that God has given us to do. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. I've always liked to imagine that after Jesus offers Martha the option, the invitation to choose to put him first, she takes off her apron, sets aside her pots and pans, turns off the stove, and sits down by Mary with Jesus, at least for a little while, before getting up again to put supper on the table. And afterwards, Mary steps up and washes the dishes. Action and contemplation are close companions. They live together in one house, on equal terms. Martha and Mary are sisters. Please stand as we confirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. And for sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 of your Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Amen. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. Amen. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those who seek your healing, especially Laura, Jeannie, John, Allie, Sam, Jane, Shannon, Sam, Gloria, Boyd, Arlen, Marilyn, Helen, Janet, Donald, Barbara, Beverly, Mariah, Ed, Julie, and Nancy. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially John Harrison and George McDuffie. We pray for those men and women who are deployed in harm's way, including Kaylee Ramirez, Peyton Applegate, and Michael Jones. We pray for the life of this church and the members of our congregation especially the Pritchett family and C.A. and Sonia Quarles. We pray for the National Episcopal Church as part of our Anglican cycle of prayer. As part of the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the recovery ministries in West Texas. fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Reverend Kelly Conklin for visiting and presiding, presiding with us this morning. Jason is slowly recovering from COVID, but is feeling better every day. I talked to him um, actually this morning. Um, next, I'd like to welcome any visitors that we have today. We are so happy to have you join us, and I, I think I've seen about six or seven visitors today. So thank you so much for coming. Um, we would ask that you would complete a visitor's packet that's found in the back table uh, behind the streamers. And just a few, no, few more announcements this morning. As always, if you want to sign up for emails or donate to Holy Spirit via text message, text HOLY SPIRIT, all capitals, to 42828, and that will get you a weekly email. Um, if you'd like to give, you can also text to HOLY SPIRIT, all capitals, to 73256. A uh, couple more announcements today. Uh, military ministry meeting. Please join after service today. That, there, you're not, okay, never mind. <clears throat> Family movie night. I know this is occurring. 
Join us for family movie night outside on our new large inflatable screen. Friday, July 22nd, we'll gather outdoors for a screening of Disney's Moana. Come at 7 p.m. for lawn games and an obstacle course, courtesy of Texas Dirt Training. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds like fun. And some pre-show karaoke. And again, I've said this before, I won't be singing. Bring your blankets and lawn chairs and all your friends and family. <laughs> Holy Spirit and Cokes will provide hot dogs and popcorn and candy and all you can eat. The movie will start at 8 p.m. Uh, Project Hope is not tomorrow, but next Monday. Is that right, Scott? Uh, please come out if you can help. Uh, we're feeding the uh, elderly who need a little bit of help, and we could use your help boxing food and passing out boxes to those people. Uh, let's see. Finally, I'm going to read this because it's really important, and I'd like everybody, when you get home, to, if you can, take this survey. The Standing Committee of the Diocese and the Executive Board have taken an important step in the process of discernment for calling the next di diocesan bishop. Uh, the Executive Board has agreed to shepherd the process of creating a diocesan profile that will help us articulate what we hope for in our next bishop and how we currently see ourselves as the Diocese of West Texas. You can find this link for this survey. If you go on to uh, DWTX, I believe, for the diocese, um, you will see the survey. It'll be right there on the first page. Uh, if not, you can also look, I think, in your email. Um, Amanda has included a link. Please take that survey to help us as we look for our next bishop. As you know, um, Bishop Reed will be retiring next year. Um, I think that's all the announcements to cover. Anything else can be found in your bulletin, on the website, or in the weekly email. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion.
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory and all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary and Martha and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Amen. For let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
communion to those who could not be with us today, please join me in sending him out. We send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share one broth, one cup. Amen. Continuing on page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and ever. Amen. May the God of peace make you whole and holy. May you be kept safe in body, heart, and mind, and thus ready for God's presence. God has called you and will not fail you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen. much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.